All right, so I'm here with the titanium trainer and uh, we've got GoPros mounted. Got one on the airplane and uh, one on myself here. We've got it uh, fixed up with a uh, 6S 3200. I'm gonna take it up and try to get some speed data on it for like min speed and max speed. Uh, we're gonna look at rate response so uh, we're going to start off in low rates, which is 70% travel and 55% expo. Normal mode. Hold mode. Got our hold set up. So we'll check our control surfaces first. Left, we should see our left aileron rise, and we do. Right, we should see our right aileron rise, and we do. Rudder pull back, it should go up, and it does. Forward, and it goes down. And then rudder... Left goes left, right goes right. Hold mode. So it's in hold now. We've got pretty much no wind. Uh, I guess what little wind we have is kind of coming out of the south. So we'll take off towards the south. Normal mode. So this is this aircraft's first flight with a camera. So we'll see how this goes. Taxi's great, this airplane, I'll tell you. I really like the way it taxis. Try to get an estimated takeoff uh, distance. So we're at zero power and three, two, one, go. Full power. So took off probably about 20 feet. Definitely a little bit, tiny bit slower than usual with the camera. Looks like it wants to climb just a little. You got the wind pushing the prop there. So low speed pass. There's a nice low low speed pass and heading south on the field. So we're in low rates right now. Uh, you can see the response, just giving it a little bit of right. Response is very docile. A little bit of left. Response is pretty docile. We're gonna bring it around for one more pass through and we're gonna go to mid rates. So this is fairly, we just did a low speed. We'll uh, pick it up a little here on this one. So there's full speed and we're going to go to mid rates. Now mid rates are 70% travel and only 40% expo. So now when we kick it a little to the right, it should be a little more responsive. And there it is. You mean you see it dipped faster there in those mid rates I have set up and we'll go to the left and you'll see it rolls faster than it was rolling in low rates. Uh, which is making the aircraft just a little more touchy. And now I'm gonna go to high rates. So now this is 100% travel and I think only 10% expo. And we'll give it a little right. You see how fast it rolls. And we'll give it a little bit of left. Boom, you see how fast it rolls. Definitely 
much more responsive. I'm, I went back to low rates now because we're gonna bring it in a little faster. So it's in low rates. I like the low rates best uh, for pattern flying. Now, even though it's in low rates, we'll give it 100% throttle and I'll just pull. pull right back on the elevator. Flight pack 21.4 volts. So no problem pulling a loop there, even with low rates. Zero throttle now. Little throttle back in. And we've got no wind today, so these speed indicators should be fairly accurate as to what this aircraft can do without any sort of uh, influence from the wind. That's full speed. Full speed right there. Just wanting to pull back a little bit and that's the camera. Flight pack's at 21 volts, so we're gonna bring it in for a landing. Little, little, little bit of a rough landing there. Not bad. So there it is, titanium trainer with a uh, little telemetry data. Well, I'll tell you, this thing taxis really good. Taxis really well. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, so we got seven and a half minutes of flight time out of it there, hauling the camera around, and uh, let's just see where we're at for voltage. Uh, this is calling, uh, bat now you can see it was down to 21.4, but now that there's no power on it, it's bounced back up to 21.3. And we'll see seven and a half minute flight, we'll see where we're at for... Uh, battery remaining all right so that was the first flight there on the titanium trainer we flew it on a 3200 6s pack and came out with 49 percent battery 49 percent battery on a seven and a half minute flight and i'll tell you that's kind of what i was expecting i mean i definitely wasn't pushing it out there um I've gotten 10 minutes out of this thing without a problem, but I had the camera on it for the first time, so I just didn't want to go too far. If we look at voltage separation, uh, a hundredth of a volt, well, actually 100.6, because this is 8.4 and that's 8.6. So the biggest separation in voltage we have is one and a half hundredth. So uh, no issue with separation of voltage on the cells. At seven and a half minutes, I have 48% remaining post-flight. We'll throw it on the charger and see how many milliamps actually go back into it. All right, so we're back with the titanium trainer, sending it out for flight. Kind of flight three, really flight two. So flight two, we used a battery that had gotten kind of damaged a little bit in the crash from another airplane and it was showing low voltage right off the beginning of the flight. So rather than take any chances, just wrapped it up and threw another battery in it. And so we'll see if, now that battery was indicating 80% when I threw it on the, on the tester. So not sure what's going on there. I threw another battery in it that I know is fully charged and we'll see if this, see if this goes any different. We are uh, using Mid -rates, low, rates. low rates, and uh, we're just gonna take it out and uh, rock and roll a little. 
Take off is like 20. Oh yeah, that feels a lot different. Wow, a lot different. So at high speeds, those low rates are plenty. Zero throttle now. And she's nosing in. We're gonna try to run it down the runway here. I'm a little off. Zero throttle, just a little throttle now. Okay, now full throttle. I'm gonna pull some G's. 100% elevator, climb, roll. And now we'll do an elevator. Roll and full speed and full elevator. Now that's with 55% uh, expo. So still able to roll that thing in a full circle, no problem, even with all that expo. Now we'll do a high speed pass. Wanting to climb with that uh, camera on there. Trim it a little. Okay. So let's bring it back around. Or we'll do an aileron roll this time. Now that's with 55% expo. Aileron roll to the right, aileron roll to the left. So if you're wondering if putting 55, 60% in there is gonna stop you, I think that sort of settles that one. I mean, it's not gonna hold you up at all. So this 100% throttle now. It still wants to climb. But I can't wait to see the GPS that on how fast that's going. 100% throttle. Try to make this a little bit longer. We'll do a slow one. So I'm zero throttle now. Now I got about 20%. thing moves pretty good. Now that's only at 20% throttle right there. Puts out a pretty good amount of uh, sound off that propeller, um, which is kind of nice, you know, it, it makes it easier to hear. I'm gonna trim it down a little. Hopefully that'll make it easier to do a higher speed pass. Still want to climb. <laughs> it's a good fly, a little airplane, I'll tell you. I really uh, docile and uh, variable speed. So that was max speed right there, 100% throttle. And now let's see 
what we can do for low speed. So we'll take it out, we'll do a nice long approach. We'll do a nice long approach, so zero throttle right now. Zero throttle, even with low rates. I'd call that min speed right there. You don't really want to be going any slower than that. Uh, I don't want to tip stall it in the turn. So that's about mid speed. I can't wait to see the GPS data and see what that is for mid speed. Let's see what we can get for a G reading. Let's try to peg out this G meter. Full speed, flying. Downward, ready, peg out the G meter now. Okay, now the other thing I wanna do, so that was in low rates. We're going to go to our high rates. And I'm going to go do that barrel roll again, do that loop again, but this time I'm going to do it in high rates. And we should see a reduced loop and we should see an increased G load on the wings. So. Full speed, 100% throttle, and full elevator. And I, I don't want to say that it was a lot different. Uh, and I think that's, that's the magic of Expo, is that off-center stick, yeah, it's different uh, response, but at 100%, you're still getting 100%. Bringing it in here. Ooh. Approach the runway the other way. A little teardrop action. And again, that, that's about min speed. I mean, is, could you get it a little lower? Yeah, probably. But I certainly, you know, I wouldn't want to go much slower than that. So that's seven minutes. Hundred percent throttle. And I can tell you right now, I'm starting to see a difference in performance. Um, it might have battery, but it's definitely not as responsive as it was towards the beginning of the flight. Now, I would say that that battery that we try to take up that second flight is, is no good because it was indicating 100% at takeoff and it was indicating 21.5 volts 10 seconds into the flight. Whereas this battery has been flying for eight minutes now and still has not indicated 21.5 volts. So I think it's solid to say, unfortunately, uh, that red battery that was in the first crash is, uh, is toast. Uh, this other battery that I have has flown seven times longer without hitting that indicator. We're going to get the 
30 second alarm here in like one. There's the 30 second. So we'll bring it in. We've got it pretty far out there. We'll bring it in. All right, touched down right on the nine minute mark. Hopefully our camera wasn't too dirty. It's uh, wet out here. Man, this thing taxis like a, uh, like a banshee, man. It just really goes on the ground. It handles well too. This thing runs like a scared animal on the ground. I'll tell you, it's, uh, <laughs> I really like the way it taxis. So there it is, uh, 3300 6S. Uh, we flew it for nine minutes that time. Yep, nine minutes. And uh, we'll check and see where our batteries are at. All right, so I'm back. Uh, nine minute flight on the 3300. Never hit 21.5 volts. Let's see where it's at. 14%. Which is good, that's fine. I wouldn't wanna go any lower than that. I would say a nine minute timer is the way to go. 3.7 on all cells. Looks like the biggest separation is these two and it's 0.6 hundredths. So that's fine. I mean, I, I, not separated by less than a 10th of a volt. So great battery here, I'm happy with this. Nine minutes on the 3300. All right, so we're getting to the bottom of the ammo can here. <laughs> Busted out the old E-Flight. Uh, I don't even know what this, what is this? 2900 6S. This battery is 10 years old. So, uh, but just between uh, the 500 and uh, the titanium trainer, I've just been crushing these batteries. So, going to... Uh, Go ahead and give this one a shot. Normal mode. Hold mode. All right, so we're in hold mode. Power up. Uh, God, that drone is gone. I don't even know where it went. All right, so uh, I don't even know. I think this is the fifth flight of the day. So left aileron, left rises, right aileron, right rises. Uh, rudder up gives us up, down gives us down. Or sorry, elevator. Rudder uh, left's going left, right's going right. We've got zero wind today, like zero. So timer's running. We're gonna go with mid rates. High rates, mid rates. All right, we'll go with mid rates. I would say that thing takes off at 100% throttle in like 20 feet. Try to do some scenic. Try to do some scenic stuff here. Take it around the pattern, see what we can see. So it is a rainy, cold day here in upstate New York. kicked in a little more than I was expecting. That's our end of runway dirt pile. Ooh, that <laughs> slowed it right down.
100% throttle. Hundred percent elevator. And now we're back down around fifty percent. Didn't really like fifty percent. Slowing it down too much. Midfield at the far side of the field. Straight ahead of you, basically. Okay, I got it. You got a drone. Give us a nice view of the drone. I think I'm like close to you and then when I get over there, it's like not even close.
scared animal. Get real close. You'll have to take your sunglasses off. Hold low. Ah, that's super cool. That is super cool. And not only that, it's got all my, it's got, uh, you're wondering about, uh, it's got all of it. Like right now, I got 17 satellites, uh, full connection on my video, full connection on my uh, I'm listening. All right, so it was a great day for the titanium trainer. Um, this guy uh, flew seamlessly today. Uh, I want to say I put about seven flights on it. Uh, I haven't seen the GPS data yet, so I don't know how fast uh, we got or, or what kind of G's that we pulled. But uh, took it out, uh, ran it through dual rates, low rates, medium rates, high rates. Um, you can see a difference in the way the aircraft rolls and the difference in the way that it, it controls. Um, if you are maidening something, uh, it's definitely, you know, is to your advantage to use dual rates. Uh, the other thing that I really like about dual rates is, uh, or Expo really is, is the big thing. Dual rates is, is just shortening your travel. But Expo is uh, changing the way your sticks respond. Um, the other thing I really like, I flew the plane a lot in uh, low rates the last flight because I pretty much flew the, pretty much the whole flight at full throttle. And um, uh, what I like about Expo, I mean, it's like magic. You know, when you're just trying to fly the thing around, it makes it very docile. But when you go to 100%, you get 100%. So, I mean, I was flying loops and I was aileron rolling it and everything else with like 50% Expo. Um, so it takes a little more stick movement. So I guess it just comes down to, um, you know, what you prefer. But basically, if I know I'm going to be taking it out and kind of hammering on it a little more, running it at higher speeds and putting it through more aggressive maneuvers, then I just go to low rates when I'm running it at full throttle. You know, you can definitely manage it with speed like that. Uh, and that makes it, like I said, it makes it very docile to fly around when I'm just trying to fly the airplane around. But then when I want to do a roll and I go to 100%, I get 100%. So I'm super happy with this airplane. I mean, you know, seven flights. Uh, it's the only uh, of the three vehicles I took to the field today and literally just put batteries through. Like, uh, I didn't do any adjustments to this thing at all today. Uh, I, I haven't, uh, it's been sitting for about three weeks and I just took it out and ran batteries through it. And I can't wait to see uh, the GPS data on what the speeds were like. Um, but uh, so far for me, this has been a, uh, a seamless aircraft that I've just been throwing batteries at. In fact, I got to the point today where I had so many batteries charging that I went to this 10-year-old E-Flight battery, which I, I got like eight and a half, nine minutes out of it on the flight, um, whereas I usually just fly the other batteries that I have. Um, one thing I can say for the telemetry timer folks, I know a lot of people fly on the timer and believe in the timer and they're not really into telemetry, but this battery is a perfect example of why telemetry is great. Um, you know, it was just showing 100%. I took it out and I was flying it for 10 seconds and the 21.5 uh, volt alarm came on. So I, I knew that was, that's not right. Um, 
and that alarm was going off and going off and going off and going off and it would not stop and so I just brought the airplane around and landed it. I threw another battery in it, no alarm. I mean, I, I flew the next battery for nine minutes straight and the alarm didn't go off one time. So you're gonna get about 10 minutes of flight time out of this airplane, which, you know, to me for an electric, there's always that performance line. You know, you could change the prop, you can enhance the performance to probably make it a little bit faster. But I mean, 10 minutes of flight time and really good performance and something that's pretty easy to see it kind of is the all-in-one package uh, i mean it's not going to win a pylon race um, and it doesn't fly for 20 minutes um, but it's uh it's a pretty good package that you can get a solid 10 minutes out of um, and the telemetry i mean this battery is, is no is no good uh, and the telemetry identified that immediately uh, that this battery was no good and as soon as I put the next battery in no problem now this battery right here is 10 years old and You know, I ran it for nine minutes and uh, it, it worked great So I was definitely a problem with this battery and you know a timer would have never caught that it was the telemetry that caught that So uh, I, I like the telemetry it works out great and uh, this aircraft so far has been terrific I can't wait to see the the maximum G numbers in the loops at minimum and maximum speeds GoPro stop recording